Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial number eight in this R tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at how to assess collinearity and multicollinearity in the context of a linear regression. Um, to begin, please download the data in R code from our GitHub if you haven't already done so. Make sure you change your directory to the location in your computer where you've saved those files. And then finally, to remind everybody that we are going forward only going to be reviewing in detail the new code and function that we review in a given tutorial and that things that, that I've reviewed in the past in detail we're going to go quickly over. The reason for that is I just want to focus on the new functions and the new code and, and do teaching around that and not get um, bogged down in, in stuff we've already reviewed. So if you do find yourself getting lost um, as I go quickly through some code, um, then I suggest you look at the previous tutorials to um, figure out what we're doing. To begin, please load the four packages. After installing them, please load the four packages that we're going to be using in this tutorial. We're going to disable scientific notation and we're going to set our directory. And then we're going to import the child aggression study data, which we're continuing to use in this particular tutorial on collinearity and multicollinearity and yeah so let's just begin so first of all this isn't a stats lecture but i think it's important to mention just briefly what the differences between collinearity and multicollinearity are for those who may not be familiar so they're overlapping concepts but not the same collinearity is when two predictors in a model are highly correlated with each other and generally speaking a correlation of 0.8 and above is considered um, collinearity, perhaps also 0.7. Uh, Multicollinearity occurs when a predictor is highly correlated with a combination of two or more predictors in the model. Specifically, the predictor is a linear combination of two or more predictors. Now, the important difference is that it isn't always the case that when a predictor is a linear combination of other predictors in the model, that collinearity is present, meaning that the there is a very high correlation between um, that predictor and other predictors in the model. Because really what multicollinearity is about is about is, is about whether or not a predictor is a linear combination of other predictors in the model. And if so, then multicollinearity will be present, even if the zero order correlations are not that high. So I'll give you a concrete example. Let's say you want to predict um, hemoglobin A1C levels with the predictors of height, weight, and BMI. Well, multicollinearity in that multiple regression is going to be present. Why? If you look at the formula for BMI, it shows that BMI is literally a linear combination of height and weight. So BMI will be, will, multicollinearity will be present for BMI. All right. How do you assess collinearity? Well, as I said, you take the zero order correlations between all the predictors in the model, which is what we're doing here. We've already gone through this code, so let's just run it. We're creating a correlation matrix, and we're going to plot that matrix. So I'm going to expand this so we can see everything. So here's our correlation matrix and the corresponding plot to help us visualize the strength of those correlations. And as, it's, as is obvious, there is no evidence of collinearity. The highest correlation we have is between parenting style and television, which is about a 0.5 correlation. So substantial, but definitely not collinear. For multicollinearity, two, the two main measures of multicollinearity, and some of this may be review for others, but the two main metrics are variance inflation factor, so the variance inflation factor and tolerance. And both of these metrics are related to each other. The variance inflation factor is the inflation of the variances and therefore the standard errors of the parameter estimates because of correlations among the predictors in the model. So if a VIF is, if a predictor's VIF is greater than or equal to five or 10, then multicollinearity for that predictor is present. And it's related to tolerance because you can calculate VIF from tolerance by taking one divided by tolerance. And tolerance, is the percent of the variance in the predictor which can't be accounted for by other predictors in the model and it's related to VIF by taking one divided by VIF and for that reason a predictor's if a predictor's tolerance is less than or equal to 0.2 or 0.1 then multicollinearity is present 
How do you actually calculate th these metrics? Well, there is a function in a package called car where you can calculate VIF. And because of this relationship, we can just easily calculate tolerance from that. So first, the first thing we need to do is define a linear model with all of the predictors that we want to assess multicollinearity. So we're calling this m.all because it consists of all of our predictors, the five predictors we, uh, of the child aggression study data. And this is the function VIF bracket, and then you put the linear model in there. If I remember correctly, uh, v, this VIF uh, function will take both linear models as well as generalized linear models. So it has some flexibility there. Uh, so we're defining a variable called VIF so that we can calculate the tolerance. So let's run that line of code and it'll calculate the VIF for each predictor. And then we're going to calculate each predictor's tolerance by just doing a simple formula, one divided by VIF. And then just to show this or show the results of, uh, of these uh, analyses or tests, we're going to use the C bind function to make two columns to show each predictor's VIF and tolerance. And as you can see, there's no evidence of multicollinearity. And that is it with regard, uh, that is it with regards to assessing collinearity and multicollinearity in the context of a linear regression. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Next tutorial, we're going to be diving into t-tests and independent ANOVAs. So we're gonna be using totally different data um, and because we're going to be talking about a different way of analyzing data. Um, so thank you very much for your time, as always, and I look forward to, um, to chatting with you next time. Bye.